Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we are going to look at expanding upon what we learned in the previous video, which was basic keyboard input in Allegro 5. So this is just part two of that video. Alright, so what you see here is essentially what we have got at the end of our last video. Uh, nothing here should be uh, out of the ordinary. This should all make sense uh, if you watched the previous video. So what we, what we left off with was essentially this window here where single key presses would move the square 10 pixels. Holding the key wouldn't do anything. I'm holding the key. Um, pressing the red X, once again, doesn't do anything. The only way to exit the window is to hit escape. Okay, so what I want to show you first is how we can get that red X working. Uh, we saw that in the video it didn't do anything. So let's, let's go ahead and add ourselves another event source. Uh, and this time the event source is going to be the window. So what we're going to do al register event source and we're going to pass that source to our event queue uh, and the source is going to be al get display event source and we are going to pass in the display. Okay. And so now events from the display, such as resizing, uh, moving, minimizing, and that red X will all get passed into our program. Uh, now that we have that, we need to catch it. So let's come up here and let's say uh, we've got this if statement, we've got this else if. Let's, let's create one more. Let's do else if ev.type uh, equals Allegro event display so it's a display event close so the user has told Allegro to close the window by pressing that red X we are going to do done equals true because remember our while loop is based on done being false so we're gonna go ahead and run this come over here uh, once again we got a box this time when I hit this red X there we go it closes the window it passed the event into our, our uh, AL wait for event here um, and then we picked it up right here and we saw that because we were telling it to close uh, let's go ahead and end our program. Now if, if we hadn't caught it here, if we had done something like this you'll see that the red X still doesn't do anything even though we're catching the event because we never pass any code to it. So we, we have to actually do something with that event. Alright, so perfect. Okay, so now that we have our window closing, uh, let's talk a little bit about why our square uh, isn't moving the way we want. Uh, you would think normally in a video game, you know, if you hold down the right arrow, you want whatever you're controlling to continue moving in the right direction. Uh, in this case, you hold it down or, and it only moves once. And as I pointed out in our last video, but I'll cover it again here, that's because the, the block is only being moved inside of the key event, okay? I push the key down, this code fires, it moves the block, okay? If I hold the key down, this event doesn't keep firing because uh, that event only fires when I press the key down, not when I hold the key down. So what we need to do is we need to save the state of our keys. So we need to uh, keep track of when we are holding the key down, uh, keep track of when we let the key go, okay? So a very, very simple way to do that is we're just going to go ahead and create uh, an array uh, to hold on to that information. So I'm going to come down here and I'm, or I'm sorry, up here and I'm just going to create uh, an array of bools called keys. The array of bools is basically going to say uh, it's a key down, true or false. Okay. Now normally, in a normal game environment, you will want to create an array for each and every possible key. Um, because you're going to be reading in a lot of key input, you know, the number keys, the letter keys, maybe the F keys, you know, all that sort of thing. But in this case, we're only interested in four. Um, so in the future, you might want to do like the whole 255 for every input type. Um, but in this case, we're just doing four. Um, and we're going to initialize them all false because they are all currently held down, or not held down. Um, so uh, no keys are pressed, they're all false. Um, 
on top of that, keeping track of, of which keys is which. Like, I can say the up key is zero and the down key is one, left, you know, but that's a lot to remember, especially if we get into, like, 255 keys, you know. Am I going to remember what number of the array X is? Probably not. So another really good thing to do here is, is come up here and we're going to define an enumeration. So I'm going to do enum capital keys, and I'm just going to define my four keys here. Up, down, left, right. In this way, uh, the computer will keep track. I'll just have to type in up, though I know up is going to end up equaling zero. As you can see in that little tooltip that pops up, up equals zero, down equal equal one, left is equal two. So I don't need to remember the numbers, I just need to remember the names of the keys. Okay. So we have our array, we have our enumeration to specify our array, so now let's modify our, our key events uh, so that we can better use this, this code. So we see here inside our key down, we are directly setting uh, or directly moving our object. And we're going to modify that. So instead what we're going to do is we are just going to change the array. We're going to set our flag to let the computer know or our array know that the key is pressed down. And then we'll handle what that means later. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this here. Instead, if the key up, if the key up is pressed down, I'm going to do keys up. This is where I define that enumerator, so I have to remember that the up is number zero, and I'm going to set that equal to true. Okay. Likewise, if key down, keys down equals true. If keys right, keys right equals true. And I can't type true today. And then keys left equals true. Perfect. Okay. So now, whenever we press a key down, okay, uh, it's going to set this equal to true. And so our block is going to go shooting across the screen. Uh, not yet, actually. We don't have the code for that just yet. Um, now, what we'll want to do is we'll need to move our cube in a different spot. See, right now, we're not actually moving our cube, we're just establishing when the keys are pressed. Since a Boolean value resolves to either a 0 or a 1 when arithmetic is performed on it, we can use uh, our array, our bool values, as if they were numbers. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but this is just a, a simple one-line way for me to do it. So I'm going to do position y minus equals, because remember, if you, if you press up, uh, the object is going to go up, which is in the negative direction on the y-axis. So that's what I'm doing, minus equals. And I'm going to do keys index up uh, times 10. So what's, what's effectively happening here, uh, I know that might seem a little strange, is if this, if keys sub up is equal to uh, true, it'll equal 1. So 1 times 10, we're moving at 10. If it's false, it'll be 0. 0 times 10 is 0, and we're not going to move at all. So without using all these if statements, you know, if it's true, then do this, you know. Uh, we're just using the Boolean values as if they were either zeros or ones. Uh, it's a little shortcut. You don't have to do it that way, um, but I find it, it can be easy. Okay, and then if we're pressing down, we're going in the, po or the positive direction of y, which is down towards the bottom of the screen, uh, and then we're going to modify our x. Uh, left takes it towards the edge of the screen, and I can't type. Yeah, there we go. And then position x plus equals keys right times that. Okay, perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. And we're going to notice we're able to move our keys. But it's not quite moving right. You notice I'm not capable of going in the opposite direction from where I start, and once I hit both keys, I can't go anywhere, I can't do anything. So now I'm actually stuck. My keys aren't doing anything. Let me explain that a little bit. What's happening is that when I say it, when I press the right key, the right is being set to true. Okay? So as long as I keep hitting the right key, right's true, you know, and we're moving uh, 10 pixels to the right. The problem is the second I hit the left key, left is also true. So now every iteration, right is moving to the right 10, left is moving it to the left 10, and it doesn't actually move. Notice we're never setting our values to false again, uh, and that's the problem. This is where the Allegro key event 
up comes in. Now we need to tell our system, hey, we've let go of the key now. And so we can then change our array uh, to reflect the current state. So right now I have this, uh, the Allegro key escape. I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm just gonna actually just copy this switch statement all together. Save myself some typing, I'll paste there, and I'll set all these trues to falses. And I'll add one more. I'm gonna do case Allegro key escape dot equals true. Break. Okay. So now we're gonna run this. And we will see. Look at that. If I hold a key, it moves. Great. Now you notice this little jumpiness to it. Like I hold the key, it kind of jumps, then pauses, and then starts, and jumps and pauses. That's not very responsive, right? There's a reason uh, it's doing this, and there's a re and there's something in the very next uh, uh, chapter or part that we will look at that will fix this. And the problem is that the game loop isn't timed. All right, it's running at you know thousands of frames a second sometimes and then smaller you know number of frames per second other times and there's nothing consistent about it and so it's not really processing my my keyboard input very uh, efficiently and so when we get into a timed game loop uh, and start our primitive game engine you're going to see this get a lot more responsive uh, and things will become much smoother but as you can see there just right now We've got our holding the keys down, uh, our, our array is holding our key states just great, and we are able to do some pretty smooth uh, keyboard input. You can see I can even run off the screen here. Yep. All right. So that is our, our, our second look, our, our more advanced look at, uh, at input, input uh, with Allegro 5. In the next video, we are going to look at mouse input. Uh, which actually is slightly easier than keyboard input, uh, so we'll look at that.